want to welcome you to another episode about a title we began in about three episodes ago now. And the first one, my focus about training for families, educational and training, retreat, seminar that can make family family to be the best they ought to be. Christian family in particular, member of your churches. And as pastor, I ask that you see it as part of your role as a pastor to organize training for homes and for family. And I also focus on you as a member that you need to ask your pastor, why are you not organizing couples programs? Then in the second episode, my focus was on youth, uh, preaching the teenagers, those in secondary school, those on campuses, and uh, those outside campus that matured yet not married. And that there's need for the church to be in such light or its lights, its presence on them, and see how they can be trained and see how this area can also improve. And I also ask that as a member of the church, it's your right to ask your pastor. We are having so many programs in our churches, we are doing many things. What about our youth? What are your plans? What are you doing for this category of youth I've mentioned? The preteen, the teenagers, those in secondary school, on campuses, the children there, and those outside campus graduated, graduated that are not married yet. And what are your plans? What are we doing? The Bible says the young one should teach the younger one. I mean, the older one should teach the younger one. Men teach the young women. Women teach the young women. And men teach the young men. Women teach the young women. And so on. What are your roles? As a pastor, what are you planning to make sure this are done? And I also said that if you don't have the bear with that, the staff, strength, you can ask professional outside to be of help. As a matter of fact, I prefer somebody outside to come and be of help where something can be said that ordinarily as a pastor, you may not want to see because of the inside understanding you have. But somebody from outside, from this our experience, who share this thing with us, you may discover that you may be touching homes more than you can ever do as a pastor. And today, I will also be talking about other aspects of our lives. We are, as a member of a church, as a pastor in that church, we need to call attention leadership to. There are other, many other areas, actually, maybe as it can be meetings of teachers, how you can train them to be the best in their churches, in their schools, where they are teaching, you can be meeting of doctors and nurses. I've never been to Nigerian hospital before, where you see nurses are very naughty and doctors are not caring, and uh, you wonder what they are doing there. If they are a member of your church, you have trained them to be professionals. You have called themselves, among themselves, to teach themselves how to be the best in their duties. You'd be surprised they be a good one wherever they are working. And that cut across board in many professions. But that's not my focus for today. My top focus, where I want to actually focus apart from family and the youth, are the children department. I mean children department where we have the toddlers and children below age 12. Or I would say below 8-10. That's my focus for today. And I noticed that sometimes the church may have plans for this area. And the plan may just be to keep them away from their parents. Now there's a child, there's a part of there's a child in all of us. What we are as adults is a, an evolved and a, a mature aspect of what we are, we, we are as children. There's a boy in every man. And there's a girl in every woman. That boy or that girl will never go away. You can only improve on it and make it better. And sometimes that boy or that girl will influence the man or the woman you are. Except you are trained otherwise. And that's why whatever our children is now can also be what they will be in 10, 20 years time when they are married. Or 30 years time as husband and wife if God keep us alive and Jesus study. And that's why I want to say, please be interested in your church children department. In many churches, children department is just a way of keeping the children out of the main church so that they won't disturb their parents, just keep them away. Don't make noise. You can make noise in your own church, but don't come to the other church and come and make noise. Just like the daycare, where you go and train your toddler and just put the toddler there and the able there, all they, did, they are doing to keep him or her till you are apart from work. That's how many church churches are running their children department. A place where they kill the children from disturbing the parents. It should be more than that. Be interested in training their teachers, training their people there, their guardians, they would have overseen them there. In many churches, I've been to one, I've been to several. In many churches, I've been to, I've been to churches in the north, in the east, I serve in the east, I've been to churches there, I've been to churches in the southwest, practically everywhere I've been, and I noticed the same things happen in all of them. 
teachers that are training the children in most cases are not trained. They said don't know they are left on their own. They are only caregiver. They are only taking care of them to the parents, give them food, give them biscuits, make them keep quiet, sing for them, make them sing until mommy and daddy come and take them away. It should be more than that. I remember when I was quite young, very young, and uh, in our Sunday school then, and our children from the school I was in the class, I remember a particular day we are taught on a particular part of the picture. I never forget that picture all my life. I always remember it. I was taught, and some of the things that happened in our children's church then, I always remember. Even though sometimes we go there to go and collect biscuits, but we are never left without a word. So therefore, when your church, children come back from church on a Sunday morning, you can ask them, what we are you taught today? What are the memory verses you are taught today? What are the teaching your teacher teach today? And what are the lessons? As an average child in a children's church, a 10-year-old child, 8, 9 years, even a 12-year-old child, tell them to give you two Bible stories and tell you convincingly the story of Joseph, the story of Moses, Story of uh, the crossing on Jordan, um, I already read the Red Sea. Story of children of Israel moving through the wilderness. Story of Joshua at Jericho. Story of Elijah and Elisha. Story of Jesus Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ. And all the Bible story. As an average child, please go and try it. So I don't as if I'm just being exaggerating. This Sunday that's coming, go and try it in your church. As an average child to tell you one or two story Bible, they can't conveniently and comfortably tell you. It tells you what kind of Sunday school for children we are running. What kind of children's church we are running in our churches. Please go and try it. Even can start your own child in the house. And say, please, in your children's church, tell me one story you have been taught in your children's church from Bible stories. You'll be surprised your child will not know anything. And that's only not for church. Even you as a parent, you are you are the you carry the bigger gift. How can you have a 10 years old in your house, a 12 years old in your house, 14 years old in your house, 15 years old in your house, and they can't tell Bible story? They don't even know it. It shows a lot of sickness going on in our spiritual life as parents. It shows we are sick, even as spiritually as parents. Now go to the church now and ask the same thing in the church. The other day, a sister of mine was having you know, a very wonderful sister was organizing a program, a very one year birthday party for her child. And we are called to come and minister. And the minister came before me to minister. And the man called a few children out. And they say, What's your name? My name is Deborah. What's your name? My name is Sammy. Say, What's your Christian name? I try to ask them their Christian name. So don't even know their Christian name. And those that have their Christian their Christian name, Samuel, Daniel, David, he asked them, Who is David the Bible? Nothing, I think only one of them among about uh, I think nine or ten he called out. Only one or two of them knew. The, the meaning or the name is bearing and who is bearing that name in the Bible. If your child is David and he doesn't know the story of David, you are a failure as a parent. If your child is Samuel and doesn't know the story of Samuel as a parent, you are a fake God. If your child is Deborah or Paul or Peter, whatever name you call your child from Bible perspective now, your Bible, their Bible name, and they don't know who is that in the Bible, Daniel. And I don't know the story of Daniel. You are a failure as a parent before God already. Now come to church as well. Even parents do not see their children at the church. That the parents are coming and they are paying their tithe and offering to that church. You want them that as a pastor? Why are you collecting tithe and offering from them if you don't help them to change their children? Why are they attending your church? If they can't do it at, at home, they are failing at home. Yeah, they shouldn't throw their own responsibility to, they do to you as a pastor, as a church. Parents have their responsibility. But even parents are failing, but the church too fail. Parents are failing, church is failing. What a calamity is that? And these children will grow up to be to have lopsided view of life, of marriage, of relationship, of whatever they enter into. And before you know it, there are more violent in our homes. Christian home inclusive, pastors' home, ministers' home inclusive. There are more violent in our home than anything good that ought to be there. Because from childhood, we lack the training. The Bible was telling Moses and Timothy, he said, from childhood, you have learned the way of life by reason of your mother, Eunice, and your grandmother, Louise. Moses was very small when he was weaned to the Pharaoh, to Pharaoh's daughter, but he knew he was not an Egyptian, even from that age. Simon was 12 when he was weaned out 
to the temple. He didn't corrupt himself like the children of Eli. He knew the training mother has given him. At 12, Jesus Christ was speaking to elders in the church. Don't say because it's Jesus Christ. It's because he was trained. God knew why he put him in the hand of Mary and Joseph. The Bible says he left that temple. He followed them and was obedient to them. That was not the first time of obedience. I was obedient to them from home. And that's why he knew to, how to talk to the temple in the temple and ask questions and reason with the elders of the churches, of the church at that time. Sir, how many story, Bible story can you confidently say, my child or my children knows? And when there is Sunday school, when life was the time you would leave your own class as an adult, your own church as an adult, and go to a children's church and go and see what they are teaching them. Do you even have interest? Do you even cast them? Do you even know who is teaching them? Do you even be interested? Who is training the teacher, teacher in your church? I mean, your children teacher in your church, who is training them? And yet, these children will grow up to be lopsided adults, immature adults, difficult adults. You'll be blaming them. If you don't train them, then why do you blame them? Please, let us grow an impartial, solid interest in the children's church in our church. At least in the one you are attending. And as your pastor will be committed to it. And yourself, you can even have some influence there. Go and see what they are teaching your children. If they are not comfortable with teachers, ask your pastor to organize training for the teachers and train them. The future of your children depends on it. Don't think what they are teaching the children now is all they know now. No, it's beyond that. Of late, one of the staff was talking to me. The child make one useless uh, statement at home, one death statement at home, and was wondering where did he hear this from. He said, Sunday, so they shall teach us like that in the morning on Sunday. And I was wondering, what kind of Sunday school teacher will teach a children something this sexual? The man or the woman is doing his best or her best, thinking that is what the child needs to know at that time. And you as a parent, what's your role? Talk to your church. Organize program that will train the teachers themselves. Encourage them to be the best they can be for your children. Because you can't say what they are now. Maybe what they will ever be. Please, let's start having interest in our children's church. Many old churches are not actually interested in their children's church. They have children's church, no doubt, but they are more like daycare. Keep the children there till the parents are close from their churches. It's beyond that. Something good must be going on there. There will be TV training them Bible stories. There will be uh, Bible story books they are reading from time to time with their teachers. There will be not just church manual alone. Many of the manual that we just use in the churches are even not for children. They are so standard, they are not good for them. So apart from your church manual, what other thing is your church using to train your children? Are that children's story books there? Are that children's CD they are watching? Are that children program their engagement they are doing? Are that Bible games they are involving with? That Bible quiz they are involving with? And the teacher that are teaching them, who is teaching the teachers? If you are not interested in those areas, one day you'll be interested, but then it'll be too late. By the time your child is behaving and they are doing what they ought not to do, you'll be asking where they learn them from. You'll be surprised they learn them from the children's church. Please have in church your children's church. And as a pastor, it's alright as a member of that church to encourage your pastor to be interested in the children's church. Upgrade your children's church from being daycare on Sunday to where children can learn about Jesus Christ. And in putting them the value they will need to survive this life, not only now, but in the future. Soon, it will be here. 10 years is not far, 20 years is not far. They'll be husbands, they'll be wives. Whatever value you put them down is what they will use to be the man or the woman they ought to be. If you don't speak out, your children will be dying spiritually and you will not know it. And not just the church alone. They also begin from your house. If the church is not doing their right, their own, what are you doing? Not the thing I've mentioned to train your children. What kind of movie are children wearing watching at home? What kind of clothing are they wearing? What kind of hairdo your children are doing? Your children are doing hairdo. You do a hairdo of a young boy, your children head. You think they grow to be a Paul or a Peter? 
It doesn't work like that. All the children know is home movies, and all the actors and actresses of Nollywood and Hollywood, they know them. But they know nothing about David, about Samuel, about Nehemiah, about Esther, about Esther, about Jediah, about Solomon, about men and women that walk this life before and they walk it well. If you don't train them in 10, 20 years' time, when they begin to start to beat their wife and slap their husband, never blame them. You are at fault yourself. Wake up and may God help you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Turn the channel where you go. You won't forget it. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.